Hi, my name is Caleb Leung, and this is my student's guide to surgical knot tying. We're going to cover a few concepts, basically the square knot, the surgeon's knot, a slip knot, and how to make these knots using a two-handed tie or a one-handed tie. Let's start with a square knot. So this is the basic knot that you'll be tying most of the time. It's composed of one twist on the bottom and another twist on the top. And you can see without tightening down, we can see clearly there's one twist on the bottom and one on the top. So square knots, when you're tying them correctly or laying them flat, prevent the knot from slipping. The next knot is the surgeon's knot. And this is the same as the square knot, except that there's two twists on the bottom. And then we have one twist on the top. So again, as you can see, two on the bottom, one on top. The surgeon's knot is useful to make sure your first knot or your anchor knot is tight, especially when your knot is under tension. And this is used in instrument ties as well as two-handed ties. Finally, we're going to learn how to make a slip knot. And as you can imagine from its name, the slip knot has the ability to slide up and down along the axis of one end of the suture. Now there's an important distinction between the slip knot and the square knot that we'll learn about later on when we learn how to make one-handed ties. The purpose of the slip knot is similar to that of the surgeon's knot. And it's used to anchor down your initial knot to ensure that it's tight. And it's used in one-handed ties. Pause and review. Let's start with a square knot using a two-handed tie. So first, start with the top end of the suture in your left hand. Then we want to assume a pistol position with our hands. That is, using our fourth and fifth fingers, hold on to the end of the suture, while at the same time with our index finger, we place tension onto the end of the suture. Then with our right hand, place the other end of the suture over our index finger on the left hand, thus creating a loop, through which we're going to pass one of the ends of the suture to create our first twist. To do that, we connect the fourth finger and our thumb in our left hand, like so. And without letting go, we pass those fingers through the loop. And using our right hand, we slip the other end of the suture in between the forefinger and the thumb. Then we pass that end back in through the loop towards ourself and present that to our right hand. We can then grasp the two ends and pull horizontal to secure the first step in our two-handed tie. Mm -hmm. The second step is sort of an inverse to the first step. With our left thumb, place tension on the suture and create a loop over the thumb. Connect our thumb and forefinger in the left hand and pass those through the loop towards ourselves. Then, slip the free end of the suture in our right hand into those fingers and pass it through the loop away from yourself, presenting that to the right hand. 
Now, as you can see, the loop that we just created has a cross in it. That indicates that we need to cross our hands for the second step while we're pulling horizontal in order to lie the knot flat. Once we've done that, you can see that we've created our square knot with one twist on the bottom and one twist on the top. Let's repeat the same thing, but in real time. Let's make a surgeon's knot with a two-handed tie. Now you'll see the steps of making a surgeon's knot is almost identical to that of making a square knot with a two-handed tie. First, we start with the top suture in our left hand. We assume the pistol position with our left hand. And using our right hand, take the free end of the suture and place it over the index finger, creating our loop. Touch our index finger and our thumb together in the left hand and pass it through the loop, slipping the free end of the suture in our right hand in between the fingers and then passing that free end through the loop towards ourself. The difference in the surgeon's knot is that we repeat this same step twice. So we pass our fingers through the loop, grasp the, the free end of the suture, and then pass that through, creating our two twists on the bottom. That's the first step. Then we move on to the second step of the knot, which is identical to that of tying a square knot. Create the loop over our thumb, Pass our index finger and thumb through the loop towards ourself, grasp the free end of the suture, and pass that out away from yourself through the loop. Then we pull horizontal, crossing our hands to make sure that the knot is flat. And there we have our surgeon's knot. Let's do the surgeon's knot in real time. Two twists on the bottom, and one twist on top, crossing our hands to make sure the knot is flat. Let's move on to making a square knot with a one-handed tie. Now there are many ways to start this, as there are many ways to start the two-handed tie and we're just going to learn one of them. So again, start with the top suture, top end of the suture in our left hand. And the way we're going to grasp the suture is by holding it between our thumb and our ring finger. Then we create a loop over our index finger on our left hand. And then we pass the end of the suture through the loop with our index finger. Now notice how when we grasp the suture with our ring finger and our thumb, this allows us to pass the end of the suture to our index finger and our middle finger, like so. Then we pull horizontal to tighten down the first step of our square knot. To start the second step of the square knot using a one-handed tie, we place the suture in our left hand such that the end is pointing upwards and that we're grasping the end of the suture with our forefinger and our thumb. 
Then using our right hand, we place the other end of the suture, lying it over top the rest of our fingers on our left hand, like so. And as you can see, we create a loop there. Now as you can guess, the next step is to pass the, the end of the suture in our left hand to our middle and ring fingers, and then pass it through the loop. We then pull horizontal to make sure our knot is flat. And there's our basic square knot using a one-handed tie. Let's do the same thing, but now in real time. Square knot using the one-handed tie. Let's learn the difference between a square and a slip knot when tying using a one-handed tie. Now for the square knot, whether you're using a one-handed tie, a two-handed tie, or even an instrument tie, what we want to do is, when we're pulling down on the suture, we want to make sure that we're pulling horizontal. This ensures that our knot lies flat and does indeed become a square knot. Again, pulling horizontal. Now let's see the difference in creating a slip knot. To create a slip knot, we start with the same steps of making a square knot. The difference is that instead of pulling horizontal, we want to use our right hand to lift up that end of the suture at 90 degrees to the other end of the suture, and then pull down. Then we repeat the same step of our one-handed tie. And make sure to pull perpendicular to both ends of the suture. And there we've created our slip knot, which as you can see, can slide along one of the axis of the sutures. The indication or purpose of the slip knot is the same as that of the surgeon's knot. That is, we want to secure our anchor knot as tightly as possible. And so we use the slip knot in a one-handed tie to make sure that that happens. To ensure that that slip knot is tight, we can repeat making the slip multiple times, usually two or three times, repeating the same step of the one-handed tie. Now as you can see, at this point, the knot is not secure. We can still slide the knot along one of the ends of the suture. This allows us to slide the knot down and to tighten this first knot that we're creating. We can then lock the slip knot by tying a square knot over top. And we do this by alternating to the second step of our one-handed tie. Pull horizontal to make sure this is a square knot. And then create the square knot over top of the slip knot. Now as you can see, the knot is now secure and cannot slide along the suture length. That's the slip knot using a one-handed tie. So in summary, we covered what is a square knot, what is a surgeon's knot, and what is a slip knot. 
And we also covered how to make these knots using two-handed ties and one-handed ties. The key is to continue to practice and to practice slowly and with correct technique. Naturally, you'll become more efficient and faster with your knot tying.